uh, Metro for NDOT, which is the National Department of Transportation. And uh, we really like acronyms in, in our industry. And so we use a lot of letters, but we, we're working on behalf of NDOT uh, for this, uh, this project. Um, uh, back at the office, we've got Amy Birch also with our office, and she's running the online meeting as well. Uh, Councilman Nash is here. Glad to have you and um, good good group of neighbors here in the room. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, Amy, I'll just tell you when to advance. I've gone to the second slide now, and, and you'll probably remember that traffic calming is a, is a res residential street program. I know this neighborhood in particular has had a lot of interest on Packard and some other streets that are classified a little bit differently. We'll look at what that means in just a second. But we do focus on residential streets, local streets. Uh, we really try to focus on physical solutions. Um, not so much, uh, we do some radar feedback signs that's kind of giving information, but we really don't focus on uh, enforcement. We don't focus on uh, other things. These physical solutions are actually putting an object in the street and getting cars to drive on it, around it, something like that. We found that to be the most effective way to slow traffic. Yes, ma'am. I know you can't. Well, feel free to, to move. I'm I'm sorry. And, and really, I can sit anywhere. If you want to control it, I can move. <laughs> I can stand in the back of the room. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, as long as I can reach this, I can, I can move myself. Um, um, we do focus on on street on uh, speed management and not so much volume. So we're not we're not necessarily trying to take a high volume of traffic and get it to go somewhere else. That's not the the objective of this program. We'll, we we like to keep cars pretty well where they are. We just like to slow them down and, and get them to operate on your streets uh, responsibly. This is a very uh, very high demand program. I'll show you some numbers in just a second. But one thing we do always like to plug is Hub Nashville. If you go uh, on your computer and you can go to hub.nashville.gov, it's a great one-stop clearinghouse for all things Metro, all service requests, not just uh, transportation related, but uh, a lot of different stuff you'll find there. Um, this is a little bit about uh, the demand for this program. Um, <clears throat> these two streets are two streets of over 400 that we've gotten requests to do something about. So the, the speeding issues that you all are experiencing in this neighborhood, uh, you're, not, you're not alone in that, unfortunately. And uh, anecdotally, it seems like starting back in COVID in 2020, it seems like it has only gotten worse from then, but uh, hopefully as we get back to normal, uh, maybe it'll get better, maybe it won't, we'll see. Uh, we're certainly working very hard in a lot of neighborhoods um, to put these types of devices in. And um, uh, we're seeing right now a lot of deployment of, of uh, speed cushions. Um, this is how these two streets got into the program. We do collect data and then we rank all those 400 streets against each other. And the, the worst streets come out on top. So unfortunately, you, you were one of those or two of those. But uh, we look at at 70 percent is, is kind of hard. Uh, engineering type safety data that's made up of speeds that we actually measure and the, the number of crashes that have happened over the years. Um, and then the other 30% are more of like um, access issues. Do you have sidewalks? Do you have transit? Also, are you close to schools? Are you close to parks where people could walk? So it's more of a pedestrian type of a index. So um, the composite score uh, puts you all in that upper tier to where um, we are working on these two streets. We're working on, Amy, sorry, I'm on, I'm on the selected streets in your neighborhood slide. And we are um, uh, working on Fairlane and Strasser. Both of them have the same limits from Nolensville to Packer. I'll show you a map here. And it's the two light blue lines that are labeled. Uh, you, you all know your, your, your neighborhood better than I do, but the, the vertical red line is Nolensville Road. The horizontal red line is Tusculum Road. Those are red because they're arterial streets. That's the highest classification of street. We do, we really don't do any traffic calming on arterials. The purple lines that you see kind of curving through there where you see Packard is one of them. Purple is a collector street. So it's a, it's a, it's a step down from arterial and, but it's a, but it's not a local street. It's meant to carry a higher volume and a slightly higher speed and, and collectors, 
collect traffic from local streets and, and send them out to arterials is kind of the hierarchy of how that works. Yes, sir. Just to make sure that we've communicated this and talked about it, um, Packard Drive is a collective street according to the data that you currently are working off of, but it feeds into local streets off of local streets. So how is it a collector street? Well, you see how it, it ties into Tusculum Road, which is an arterial. Mm -hmm. So the idea is it collects traffic from local streets. How is your flow diagram? Is it flowing to the interstates or flowing to one? Uh, we, that, that's not how the classification works on those. There's no directional flow. There's no threshold. Would that be something that we could probably look into? Is the direction of that secondary collector street? feeds into the locals. There are no other red lines that it connects to. It actually feeds into the first traffic calming project in our neighborhood, and we still hit the marks to hit a second traffic calming. So we've had two traffic calmings in a span of four years, five years. So that means our neighborhood is at the There's, there's needs. Yeah. Demand. Mm -hmm. So how can we get that looked at to be changed? Well, so for the first time, they had traffic going, they was 15 leaving East Ridge, and they said, oh, well, that makes everybody go down to Creekside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they did Creekside. They did Creekside. Okay, you're going to do these two. And that's what's going to happen. And then, well, we're for Mill is, right. they're going to come and say, oh, let's go down to the park. Yeah. So what, one of the changes to this program has been, um, one of the things when when I started by saying this is a street program, not a neighborhood program. Okay, the 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 rationale there is we used to do these by neighborhoods. We'd come in and say, okay, Fairlane qualified. Now let's talk about what other needs are. And y'all would say, well, if we do Fairlane, it's going to push it to Melpar, and we'd say, okay, well then we'll call Melpar as well. And 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 these projects started getting bigger and bigger. Um, one of the changes this has made is we go much more strictly by the application now. So the application was was Fairlane Strasser. We measure those. I think there was another street on there. Jeff, Packard, you may rem uh, you remember. Packard was, Packard was on there. Three pools, there was one four way, two three way, and Packard. And of course, um, the crash data did not meet the criteria for Packard. And they had tied in Creekside already that they had already had that. And wanted to look a little further at the four way uh, at Creekside and Packard. Yeah. So, I, and we covered some of that in the first meeting, but but the short answer is the policy is we're, we stick pretty strictly with what's applied for and what met those criteria. Did and, you do a traffic study before and after on these? Two? Um, we do samples. Yeah, we don't look at diversion. That's very difficult to track, but we do look at speeds before and after. We have some of that data. I don't have any with me, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Tom's, we got 24 of these projects, plus we're working a backlog of about 40 other projects. So we got a lot of streets. So that's why we don't do before and after on everything. We've got some samples. That's why we bring that because this neighborhood has been awarded these projects to be completed because because there is such a danger. And proof is in the pudding with these dangers because you guys keep giving the neighborhood money because the data shows that the speed is immense. For these two streets, absolutely. Do, do you know, has Melpar been, or is that what we're talking about, Melpar or Packard? Do you, have there been applications put in on those? Packer, Melpar, after, and he's put in applications, and a couple other people. We're, we're peppering. So un God. unless that was the most recent application period, we probably have data on it already. Well, and that's why we're asking as concerned neighbors, and that's why all of us have showed up as concerned neighbors, because we're trying to get the answers and the data yeah. to prove, like, Packer is seeing some issue, and it needs to be rectified. Well, I, I, we can easily pull that. If it's been if it's been applied for and we have that data, we can easily share that. I don't know that that request, I, I've never it, heard that request, it but. It was cut out of this one. Yeah, probably because it didn't meet the, you know, there's, it didn't meet the same level as, as Fairlane and Strasser did. But we can certainly provide that to you. And that gives you some indication of how you're going to rank, you know, in the, in the coming application periods. And I just, again, you say Packard is a collective street that collects from Tusculum. 
but then it drops Strasser, Fairlane, Keeley, um, Peakside, and the other one. Have all been awarded, you know, East Ridge, East Ridge have all been awarded. Right. All connect to Packer. Right. Packer doesn't connect to And Haywood. I think Haywood, no. which. Doesn't connect. Yep, yeah, it doesn't connect to Haywood. Mm -hmm. You have to take Peakside, Keeley, or. Well, all I can tell you is. Tonight in this project, what we're looking at are these two streets. I think it certainly warrants an ongoing discussion. We've already talked some about that with, with Packard. I don't have the authority to, to do anything with that. I will say um, there's a little bit of flexibility when it comes to collectors. We have done traffic calming on collectors. Huntington Parkway has speed cushions. Um, there's there's a couple that do. So I think this upper end of Whispering Hills, you know, when Black... I, Think that's still a collector? I could be wrong. You know, Blackman turns into Whispering Hills, right up toward the on this end of it. It got him. so anyway. It's it, it, right, right after you cross over Edmondson. So, um, you know, it's not out of the question. It's just a matter of continuing that dialogue. Just I almost got in a head-on collision because somebody was using the middle lane to pass somebody that was oncoming to me, and they speed up and down the pack, or actually Tuscaloosa. They speed yeah. up and down. Hustle and Packard all the time. Yeah. So they're there. Fairly, yeah. Before they go down the hill at Packard. I, was saying, mm -hmm. I live like halfway between on Fairland. And, you know, they get put up four white. Right. Right. And nothing from there to that. That's right. Yeah. And they, they can start there. And by the time they get up to my house, I guarantee you that both of them. Or doing about six. Well, people are always so that four. Well, no, yeah. 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 I was wondering, is what is the plan? I'll show you in just a second. I think it may be on the next slide uh, or or two. <laughs> I may lie. Maybe a couple more, but it's we're getting there. So where we are tonight is on that red circle. That says meeting two. Last time we were two circles back at meeting one. I told you last time I didn't think we really needed a second meeting. We had talked about it. Everyone seemed pretty um, pretty uh, on the same line. Uh, NDOT came back and said, we really need to be consistent across all neighborhoods. We're going to have two meetings. So that's why we're here tonight. I really don't have major changes. If you were here last time and saw it, the reason we're back here is not because we changed the plan substantially, uh, maybe not even at all. It's just because we needed to do a second meeting, make sure that information was out in the neighborhood and that everyone had a chance to see it, ask questions. And then we're going to go to a ballot, and, and that's the the uh, next circle. I'll, I'll share some information about that with you, too, after we look at the plan. So um, as we discussed last time, um, speed cushions are they're really the bread and butter of this Program. Most of the streets we're doing, well over 90%, this is, this is the device that we're using, and it's what we uh, propose using on these two streets as well. Um, the configuration looks a lot like these. The only difference is fair lane is a little bit narrower, so it will be a, it will be a two cushion, like you see on the right-hand picture there. And um, Strasser is a little bit wider, and so to cover that width and so make sure people can't drive around the things, We'll, we'll do three pads. Can I just really quickly go off on a tiny little tangent? Sure. They're putting in sidewalks on Fairlane, which is surprising mm -hmm. and welcoming. Is mm -hmm. it, are they going to go all the way down to Packard? If I had to guess, I don't know the limits of that, but if I had to guess, they're going to replace the asphalt path yeah. that's there now. So wherever there's an asphalt oh, there, and, and I think you said that was York, Yorktown. The 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 and he said that on this project, they were just going down to Madeline, and that's it. So they're not they're in a stop sign. That's the stop sign. Yeah, no, 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 no. There's, there, there, there appears to not be. Well, they got the lines. I was yeah. drawn for it. Yeah, but yeah, he told me that they were stopping at the stop sign. At the stop sign. Why is that? Because there's still a driver around the place. Does the sidewalk continue past Madeline? It just, then, then it's then it's probably a funding thing or kind of a phasing thing, and they're going to do this part and hopefully come back and do more. No one knew this was even no, that yeah, it, that's why. I, right, and I and I'm uh, not aware. I'm 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 aware of the sidewalk program, but I, I'm not aware of this project in particular. But it came about so quickly. That's why I feel sure they're just replacing the old asphalt path that's here and making it ADA compliant and everything. It'll be nice. Well, then that's well, I, go. So, what would be the time? Time would be the time. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, well, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know, like, like when they start something, they have to finish it by a certain completion time. Uh, no, no, no. There's, as you can imagine, there's ADA issues all over the city. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's systematically working through that. So, it's great you're getting the sidewalk program project. I didn't know that until. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to go, uh, Amy, to the next slide, which is the the concept plan. So I really don't think I made any changes from what I saw you last time. The only thing I can think is maybe we shifted a little bit. And so I know it's hard to read this, but the the yellow letters that you see are roughly the address that we're these will be in, um roughly in front of so i i can give you more detail about that i'll do that in just a second but the the concept is on fair lane which is the road to the north there would be five sets of speed cushions two before you get to madeline and they always stop and three on the lower half with the last one being before you drop off and go down the hill toward packard what's your address that's that's identified so you've got one really close to your house um a, a note about that we um one reason we don't show anything down toward packard is we do stay off of hills um we've got some grade restrictions uh we've got some horizontal curve restrictions i don't think either one of those affect here but driveways are another thing that we be sure we we don't put these right in front of somebody's driveway we try to stay at least 15 feet away from it and uh and we uh you know we locate them that way we can give you even more detailed information than this but before i leave this slide um and then the bottom one is is strasser shorter street so there it's two cushions before the stop and then one on the back side we're looking for Four to six hundred feet in between these, we our experience gives us really good progression without just being totally overbearing and making it miserable on you all. That that keeps speeds at a nice low consistent what level. Is that red circle stop right there. Like that's, the stop that's the stop sign. That's just to show you. If if I didn't show that, then it would look like a really big gap in between here. And the reason is because we've got that always stop right there. I know people still run it, um, but. It it has some impact, I feel sure. And so we're running in, in town. I'm sure right. running them yeah. Say they're only running them on those two streets. I mean they're running them everywhere. All right. Can anything be done at the stop signs? Like say the line. For the stop signs. A small speed bump there. But when the people do run it. <laughs> they feel it? Yeah. Uh that's a really well, no, there, there is no such thing as a raised stop bar, but uh, we could be creative. They have raised four ways. They'll raise the whole intersection. Apply for something. Well, maybe put it out there when you're doing this. Well, um, yeah, that, that you would build, and, and there are a few of those. I don't. I can't think of any in Metro. I got to think there there may be some somewhere. There are some raised crosswalks uh, over toward Old Glen Rose that the little park down there has a has raised crosswalks, but whole intersections like that, I, I just, I can't think of any. Yeah. Well, and, and the problems that you're talking about, that's one reason why we don't use stop signs as part of the stop signs are they're not traffic calming. They're they're meant to be, um, you know, control devices. But anyway, yep. um, so the the more detailed information and one other aspect to this, I guess you 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 won't see it, but it's there. We are going to restripe as well. We've got that in the plans. To to the lines are getting pretty faded on on both streets. In fact, on Strasser, if I'm thinking right, it's almost like you can't even see them. Yeah. You know? Uh, and that's just edge lines on Strasser. Fair Lane has both edge lines and a center line. So we would just put all that back in kind. Um, so the detailed plan, we actually do have better than that, uh, you know, kind of conceptual drawing. We do have detailed design drawings where you could actually see if you wanted to see the one in front of your driveway. I know you can't read that, but it, that one, it says 27 feet west of the driveway at 366 Fair Lane. So you could actually go out and say, this is exactly where we're going to put it. And so we, we're going to, we'll take this information 
and post it online. That way, when we send this ballot out, everyone can click on it and get as much information as, as we have. They can see exactly where, where it's going and, uh, and vote accordingly. Um, the little sketch down in the bottom right-hand corner is just the, the layout configuration for how those cushions are, are placed. But um, uh, as I- to that other slide with the sure. little yellow thing. Yeah. Does that say where they want to put the little- Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. So I can. Street on I can. So on Strasser, they're in front of 389. 389 is closest to the daycare and all. Then 380 is the next one, and 360 is the last one. Okay. You're, you're on those. Yeah. So are you talking about the daycare at the church? Right. I don't know what their address is, but uh, this is that house right before you get to the daycare. It's, I think it's fairly close to the Raywood Lane intersection. Prior to or after the church reception? Looks like it's on the Nolansville Road side. Before the two stops after stop Any other questions on the plan? Um, about the water. Is there any resolution to correct the stormwater runoff that was pulling up down there? Uh, no, I mean, I don't have that as a, as a, as a tool. Um, one thing we would want to make sure is that none of our speed cushions are where it puddles up regularly or something like that. Yes, sir. Suggest you take a picture of it in the phone. Yeah. Do you have a uh, national yeah. phone? So we're the next that's storm water. That's storm water. That's... Yeah. I, we brought it up last meeting, and so I thought yeah. I'd just re yeah. retouch that point because that's I mean where, where they put the new storm drains yeah. in with the sidewalk and everything. So I didn't know if that was well correct that issue. Well, also a bunch of trash collector looks awful. Yeah. yeah. Like the yes. trash. <laughs> I think I've been You do? Yeah, I'll do my bag every day. I don't walk when y'all walk. I try to walk. I'm about walking more dark. Well, hey, I'm retired now, so I'm walking. I know. When do the. You're that far. I am. Yeah, yeah. I met your wife. Yeah, that was great. All right, we'll keep moving here. Just when, for the, when do the bumps go in? Uh, I'll, I'll sh- uh, I've got a slide on the time frame here in just a second. Let's talk about the balloting. That would be the next step. So assuming everybody's good with the, the concept that we've got, um, like I said, it was pretty much the same one from last time. We would go from this meeting um, to the ballot process. And so what that entails is we'll send a card out. Did y'all get cards for this meeting? I talked to okay. some tonight that were not here. They they got they finally got their card. They, they did. Time. Good. You got yours okay. It's the first time I got yours. Okay. Time. Interesting. You got both. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just send them to. I don't think I've ever gotten one. I think I saw it on this floor. Here's the. All right. So so the re, if you live on this street and didn't get a car, the most likely reason is we send it to the owners. I don't know if you own the property or not. I do. I'm okay. Kind of Stressor or okay, fire. then that's it. That's it. All right. So the ba- the way the balloting works, and this is a picture of Fair Lane and all the properties along Fair Lane in between the the limits, with a couple of exclusions. We're not going to ballot the church property or the commercial properties out by Nolan's for Road uh, and stuff like that. If it's vacant, we don't ballot it. If it's non-residential, in, in some ways, we don't ballot. It. But everybody else, we're going to send a card very similar to what you got. There's little pictures of it there. And it's got a QR code on it. It'll come to your mailbox. You just you can either do the QR code or it's got a phone number if you want to call somebody. And, uh, and it's going to take you to a Nashville.gov um, page where you'll, you'll tell your name and address. The card right down here in this corner has a little code on it that helps us know that the intended people are voting. And so you enter that code and then you'll tell us yes or no. And, uh, and we log that. That ballot stays open for six weeks. At the end of six weeks, we take all of those responses, yes and no's. And if 66% of the people who voted approve of it, we'll do the project. 
So on both Fairlane and Strasser, especially on Strasser closer to Nolan, so I feel like a lot of those are renters. Okay. And then no. They won't get it because it's going to go. It's going to go to the property owner's address. We send it. We don't send it to the property itself. We send it to the owner that's on file it with Metro. Have to be, it doesn't, Jeff. Just to clarify. It doesn't have to be the majority of the of the houses. It has to be the majority of those who did it. Seven percent of those oh. that get it, not those people. So if okay. yeah. If they don't vote, it's just a wash. It doesn't count against us. It used to, and that was part of our problem, you know, trying to get petition for everybody. Right. Yeah. So this is a big improvement. And and we know at the end of six weeks, we're done. There's no going door to door and begging and trying to find people. And uh, Six weeks, we're done. And then, um, so the record right now, I like to tell people this, um, We've got about 37 streets that are done with this balloting process. And right now the record is 33 have passed, voted for it, and four failed. They voted against it. So and then, for what it's worth. So when will the ballots go out? Um, it's kind of up to y'all. I think after this meeting, all we need to do is post the, the plans online and we could send them out. So um we norm we've been saying give us two to three weeks from this point. We probably don't even need that. Um, the only thing that we're we're cognizant of now is we don't really want to send it out and have it close like the week of Christmas or some odd time, you know, when people are. So we might just count back from that and assuming we're not in that little window. I think we're we're ready. So it pretty be soon. Spring that passes. It would be yeah, because it would be that, and then six weeks. And then another eight weeks and another eight weeks. And, yeah. and it may not be that long. I mean, eight, eight weeks is, um, we, we hope that's on the outside. That's the time to just get the material in. Metro does not stock these. Just um, so take, take the March. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with it. Think what happens in some of these cases is people don't know what they're doing. So we've got a lot of people on the roads now that drop them up, we're left, or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. These are going to get picked up in the mapping system and they're going to ground because they're on one street, they're able to come to Because it's going to be a quicker way. Right? There's not going to be a traffic calling or stop sign. And just read it. Are you talking about you're on Melfire? Yeah. I don't know that it'll reroute that much to Melfire because it's not an exit street. If it was an exit street, it'd make a lot of sense. If I'm coming from Ellenville Road to go to Pack, yeah. then I can get to Melfire. Well, you know but you have to turn on you have to turn on Raywood, right? Melfire doesn't go all yeah. it doesn't go all the way to Tuscaloosa. It, it goes to Raywood, so you would have to. It's not super convenient, but people do speed on that street. They, they, uh, uh, they speed. Figure out a way to get around it. But I'm but so I guess really, what we're asking is in the instance of Creekside, where it was basically like, oh wow, this is really causing problems for people. Street like all that time is it right now? It would still be the application period. So you would say, okay, you guys put it on fair lane. We've seen a noticeable increase in traffic. And and I would imagine NDOT is going to say, I'm sorry, apply on that next program. We'll get you. We'll collect that data. No, 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 but no, you're, you're in. And, and I don't think they've thrown any out. And I mean, some of these have been in for several years. But the difference would be if a change like this creates a different change for you, you know, creates now maybe you got more traffic or maybe it's faster. I mean, it's anybody's guess. It's just it's conjecture at this point about whether or not that would really happen. But if it did, I would reapply with a strong note. Please come out and reassess our street because there has been a change next to us and we think it's affecting us. Do you think stop signs and maybe at, at um, Yorktown and Ellen Street or Madeline and Melfire would help? People are I know, I know. for the people that are here. Yeah. Well, those have been knocked out twice already. Yeah. Crash. You have to have crash data for that. So, but, but I think it, I think it makes a hundred percent. We talked about it already. We talked about it 
We talked about it before. Yeah, they don't I think it makes a hundred percent that male power would be added. Yeah. I don't think it's a I think that's a no brainer. I think it makes it easier now mm -hmm. once these are in place to do that. So I think that's I think that we can see that in the future. <clears throat> we all do it before yeah. after something like that. No comment. There's a limited amount of them. And they're trying to put it where they need it the most and they're building as fast as they can. It's progress. I mean, that's a rhetorical question. Nobody wants to chop with that. That's why we're out doing this. That's why we're trying to build sidewalks. But the most expensive thing the city does is build a sidewalk. Streets where sidewalks were never intended. I bought a house, didn't have a sidewalk, but now everybody wants a sidewalk. Then we, have to build. we had a sidewalk approved for uh, Brewer Drive between Mulder Road and Miller. When the vet was still the council. And it's just now started. Probably, probably a while before yeah. that, yeah. It's been there a while. They haven't started digging yet. They finally got all the land procured, the easements, the right of ways. You have to move all the utilities, the drains, ditches. So, and again, it's thousands of dollars per little bit. You know, it's, it's not like new construction. So, I would say we're doing as much as we can with the funds we got available. Uh, there's only a limit to how much the taxpayer will pay. We already hit you a couple of you know, a couple of years ago. Sandra, would you like to answer that? What are they cost? Yeah. Like, we wanted the best. Well, well okay, so it, I'll just be straight. Like, how much does it cost? You know, there, there, is just, there was some legislation. There is some legislation. It's got it back on the docket. Yeah, I heard it now. Uh, that will allow neighbor associated with that to fund, but you still have to kind of follow the process. But yeah, I mean, that would be great. So if money is the barrier, like, I'll find But money. I think you're going to, you know, you know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't been to one of the our district's neighborhood meetings for a while, but you have had the police said before, and I've gone to the um, District 32 meetings every month recently, and the police do often go and they talk about trying to provide better uh, traffic solutions and get the racers and the speed. I think in this case right here, it's going to be it's going to be easier to to move over to mail power once that's completed. And we continue to request that, and with with a little more sense of urgency and a little more support. I know how people feel about current council, but I can tell you right now, we're gonna we're gonna have a councilman or a council lady in the next when, when we move to twenty seven that we'll get some support. We just haven't had that support infrastructure in District Thirty Sarah, for twelve years. Twelve years. I'm gonna run again. So, oh, okay. Now, now I think if he's mentioned some lady. Okay. I'm, I'm not I think okay. it makes sense to move over to Mail Park. Let's work together on Mail Park. <laughs> Let's focus now on Mail. But yeah. but now you have to understand, Packard, Packard, there is a huge initiative on Packard that's already begun. Uh, but now to move over from these to that, I don't think I I think it'll happen. I think it'll happen rather quickly. And I think that Jeff saying to put the urgency in it, work together. In the meantime, keep keep, keep the police involved. I, I was just talking to the police before we got in here about a couple of things, and we're not going to stop people from running those two stop signs. But what we will do is, is we can eventually. And I know Jeff Jeff is um, going to tell you about. No, pushing traffic out. My my goal would be this. My goal would be this is to push traffic to Tuscan Road and to have some kind of barrier on Packard to where they can sustain that. Now, if we can't do that, we gotta slow it down because the fact is um we were on we were doing a TV interview three weeks ago. Okay. And I told him what was fixing to happen, and you could hear it coming. So side by side, and she, the TV, the TV camera just missed it. But side by side, going down Packard, were two speed racers. And I told her it was coming. I said, "Here they come." So it's and, and we don't have a and, and I'm gonna get off of this, but we don't have good neighbors at Mega Sound. And if anybody thinks we do, 
then I can I can tell you hundred percent we don't. Because what they're doing is running a shop there. And what they do is is they drive from Zoom to the end of Packard, they go down to Zoom to Tuscan, they go up and they come they're testing their vehicles, right? So oh, no, they come by and, and all you have to do is, is, is I have a video, if anybody wants to see it, I'll have to go home and get it. I took a video on going down Raywood, driving one night, right? And it was about 1130-ish, sometimes, sometimes, and I come from Raywood, and I'm just driving, coming home, right? Just, just coming home. Uh, we're coming home from a hockey game. And I see a young lady hanging out the side of a car, and it's got neon lights up under it, and she's doing a video on Strasser of him doing this all the way down Strasser. So the, my instinct was, of course, you know, I'm, I'm Hawaii 5 -0, I'm on it. And then I'm on the police and they told me immediately, you back off. So, you know, it was a smart thing to do, right? My instincts took over because I just, I'm sick of it myself. But the video that I showed the police was enough. And eventually they caught two of them. So they can get their cars impounded. They can get, you know, and 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 don't make no mistake about it. I've been on Mel Park tons of times and seen what you're seeing. The wreck at Madeline and Mel Park two years ago was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. I mean, it was terrible. So, and then there, there's been some near misses that y'all probably see getting out of your driveway. So I don't want anybody to think, I personally don't care because I really do care about Mel Park. I want Mel Park to have it. I think we just have to work with them because of the funding. And then you're here tonight. Let's just work together and push forward with making sure Mel Park's in the next round. Make sure we communicate with Jeff and NDOT and, and council and make sure that they understand the urgency to get that done. And your thoughts are, I don't live on either of these streets. But the urgency to me is, is to at six o'clock in the morning when I'm driving down these streets and I'm seeing people cut through our neighborhood and almost hit kids at bus stops. Okay. That's okay. very important to me and it happens everywhere. So, and it happens on Mel Park. So, and, and I know you guys live on Mel Park at your home and you take it serious. So I think from this forward on, if anybody, I will, I will communicate with anybody in here with what I can do to help. I'll help any way I can to keep it going. And then share the urgency that you have. Because if it's urgent to you, I live in Fairlane Park 27 years. It's it's important to me if it's important. It doesn't matter where you live. We're all in that community together, right? So we have to work together. And I do see the urgency, especially if I was if I was on Mel Park, I probably feel the same way, you know. And it makes sense. But I think our argument as a community is better now than it was before because they're going to have those in place, right? But we got 16 weeks to work on it, right? So we're not going to stop. We'll start now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just, it, Brewer Drive did not get awarded traffic timing their first time. Mm -hmm. They had to make a second application. But if y'all don't have my email or need my email, then that's please, I'll problem. be happy to help. That's not like really the base of the problem. Like, I'm happy that they're getting traffic called. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's no, absolutely. Fair. That's great. But it's like, Okay, we're going to do this. We're not even going to consider how much we could change or mess up or if this is good. No, we're not. It's just like, okay, we're going to do these two. And just like the whole creek side. Creek side, it didn't get done. It's just, it took like a month. And then, I don't know, within like two months of everything being done, creek side was done really quickly because they figured out. Well, I think you're answering your own question right now. That yeah. that's why we what's going to take place here. Okay. I was, yeah. it's just kind of from the planning stage. Yeah, it like it would be. It, it's, but, it, but I will say, I mean, it's really hard to foresee what the impact's going to be. We just did a big project in, in Sylvan Park. And Sylvan Park's a traditional neighborhood where every street's exactly parallel to every one of them, and they're just a, a short block apart. And I mean, if anybody's going to see traffic divert from a, tra I would think it'd be a neighborhood like that. And and even there, you know, it it may happen in some streets. It happens in some streets. It doesn't. So, it's really difficult to predict. You know, if we put something here, are they going to go out of their way? Is it is it convenient enough to come up to Mel Park or just to come back down? I I don't know. They might. They might.
They might, but until we have that data that says it, we've got a lot of demand we're trying to spread out. I have to say, I live at the end of Strauss. They're packed. Okay? They have the facility. They have the ones house that exploded. So I go outside, and I'm like, oh, gosh. But it was Gillette and Packer. It's on Gillette. Right? Yeah. That was a block for me. Yeah, a block for me, too. And I mean, when that happened, I thought, <coughs> I still was kind of, how did that happen? Coming down and the other car was in the yard. Oh. And I know for a fact that Packer from Tusk, I could sit on my couch any time of the day or night. Tuscan Road is like a drag strip. Yeah. If mm -hmm. Metro sit out there, they'd probably make hundreds of tickets if they had the time. Mm -hmm. and when they get off of Tuscan, it's like, ah, you hear these, you know, wheels squealing. And it's like, they don't slow down. Even well, in my yard, the stop sign's right there. They have ran through that stop sign and, and landed up in that yard across the street on Packer. Well, my street's a, a block wide. I had a car in my yard two days ago. Because mm -hmm. they... They, they took the, and it was a, a neighbor. Is that the one that kid. went in and backed out and took off and had the flat tire and took off? No, it was my the neighbor kid, and I went down and made that. Well, that just happened three or four days ago where a car came through, went into the ditch, backed out with a flat tire, and took off. On Packard? Oh, no, I'm sorry, on Packard. Oh, on Packard. Again, on Packard. So he, he had a flat tire. He ran in the ditch. I'm sure he was running from something. It takes off with a flat tire, smoking all the way up Packard. So it's it's you know, to me to me, I think it's a, a great conversation right now. But I tell you what, we really need is because I don't live on Melbar, I don't live on Fairlane, I don't live on Packard, I don't live on Strasser, but the residents of those streets, they mean everything to me because that's my neighborhood, right? So what I'm hearing is, is we're constructively talking about how to get something done on another street in our community, right? So I think that makes sense because I don't vote on Strasser and I don't vote on, I won't vote on uh, Fairlane. But I've, talk, I've talked to probably, I would say probably 70% of the residents there because you're, you're very correct. We have a lot of renters in our community that are excluded. We have some, some people that are just not going to respond, right? So good for us. We don't have to count on that percent hurt us, you know, um, and I think that we got eight, 16, let's just say we got two months to make a, a very valid fight for that to go into the next round, right? So it starts uh, January, middle of January, 23. Yeah. So. Um, you have, you follow go on to the uh in dot website and multiple equal for application or you can there's nothing keeping you from doing it but um it's intended to be either a homeowner association like if you've got a, an organized group like this you can apply if not um there's multiple blanks for neighbors to to sign on to it it's really not intended for one person to think it's a good idea and go do it like metro likes to see hey Neighbors have talked and they, they would like to see this. So it's better the more. Be the more you can sign on, the better. The um, There is a new, I mean, it's brand new. I don't even have it on here, I don't think. I could probably find it. There's a brand new tracker that just came out last week that shows all the applications that are on file. It's on a map. So you can see, yeah. does my is my street already been applied for? So that's really handy too. But it it never, it never hurts to reapply and put... I, I will. It won't hurt with multiple names, and I and I would go ahead and put the put the rationale here is to please relook at this. You're you're fixing to do them on a street next to us. I'm actually I'll actually give them as much information as you can. So, uh, and I'll let y'all know when it's filed. But I would recommend, and you can you can sign the one that I'll do because it'll have multiple people on it. But you have to remember you have to remember something. I can't vote on it. I can support it, yeah. and I will. It's going to be really, really important that the people on Melpar 
know this, right? So they can say, yes, we got to have this, right? So, and it, and what it does is, is these these are going to help the community, right? It's not just going to help Belpar. It's not just going to help, it's going to help the whole entire community, right? So that's what people have to understand when they support something, is it helps everybody, right? So I think when I file it, I'll file it on behalf of Fairlane Park Neighborhood Association, as, as always. Um, we'll hold a meeting on it. But we, we have some other things to go over, but we'll hold a meeting on it. Uh, anybody that needs my information, it's easy to get. I'll give it to you. Uh, phone number and all that. I have a card in here I can give it to you. Get on next door. Next door. Yeah. yeah. Well, the problem with next door is this. And 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 you got to shield yourself from social media because if somebody don't like what you're talking about or it ain't good for them and they got an idea, you're going to be on bickering and arguing and fussing, right? When you post it and say this is what's going to be, I personally am, am going to tell you just how I feel about it. I feel like this is Fairlane Park. We need to protect Fairlane Park. We ain't had nobody else for 12 years to protect Fairlane Park. And the record speaks for itself that we have it. So I think in this particular case, we can help ourselves. So what I would say is, uh, Laura, is I would, I would do that. I would let you guys know when I do that, right? And then I would, I would say, you, you could have one ready to and piggyback them. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what I plan on doing. Yeah. And then, and then uh, have, have ex express, express the concerns for having these two streets in there and your thoughts on, of course, I've, I've already got some thoughts of how you feel like that's going to ne negatively impact your safety, you know, your safety for the overall. I mean, yours, it's your house, right? But the safety of the whole entire if they're looking at, like Jeff said, I mean, if it's just going to be, I like it or I want it, probably not going to be the most popular thing they look at. But when you're focusing on the overall of what it will do for everybody, I think then it becomes something that they look at and say it's a benefit to, that they can make make work. So I think, but keep in mind, too, that they're not, they're not picking this based on who writes the most compelling argument. I mean, it's oh, it's about the data, so they'll come out and... I this mm -hmm. is very resonant group, very deep. This made a few counts for the Looked over where the gun was sitting there. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, I, if you don't mind me, I know. Uh, you know uh, the, uh, I dealt with this with East Nashville and Commander over there and going to hear trial over there. Say this, it may not apply to anybody in here, but apply to somebody out there. Mm -hmm. These people doing this racing around, they don't come to mind. They're somebody's neighbor. They're somebody's kids that may be a friend of yours. And I want to influence mama. Hey, mama, I saw your son out here today. And I know you don't want to get in confrontation, but if, if you know grandma and you know somebody that has an influence over it, it may be time for us all to start talking and let people know that this isn't acceptable. Please help us end this. Because the police can't do the right. And there's not enough traffic coming out there to ever cure it all. It's kind of a combination of things. It's enforcement, it's education, and it's uh, uh, engineering. But uh, don't I, vote for a budget that doesn't fund the place. Well, that's a nice deal. <laughs> and I'll. This I'll, mayor has done very good. He's hired 320 officers since he's been well, here. And I was at the the district 32 meeting and they said they had over 600 openings that oh they were there were 600 cadets coming out of the that's the training. A, uh well, one of the officers now they may they may be in the pipeline we had seven classes more classes this past mm -hmm. year than i ever had ever knew about while i was still working and they got eight scheduled for this next year so they're really trying hard to get it staffed up and the money's there for the positions and we just bought a whole bunch of cars uh, trouble right now is trying to get them because of supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, sorry about the that. cars or the people? The cars. Well, people too. I mean, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's always uh, yeah. it's lots of competition out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we're doing pretty good over there right now. Well, take the rest of the cars. <laughs> <laughs> you can get your Barney Five car out there. <laughs> it works. Yeah, they yeah probably does. does. Thank you for taking time because uh, this is. When we when we worked with Amy um, about 
12 years ago. We got She's on the call right now. She's doing the online part. We got part. additional mm-hmm. traffic common in here, so we're able to get the stop signs and be a part of that first traffic common, and we talked about how it's evolved. Um, uh, it's, you know, it has evolved. And what happened, yeah. we went from a very, we went from a very fair lane park, we went to a very calm fair lane park, to a very escalated fair lane park in, in that time. And we have to also look at, and, and this is a little bit on, on the side is, some of our residents are as guilty for running those stop signs and driving sure. the way they drive yeah. as there are people from the outside. Yeah, you get really familiar with it. Yeah. So, so to so to Councilman's point, you know, if we if we can build a relationship with our neighbor and say, look, you know, we don't want anybody hurt. You don't have to fight them or argue or fuss, but say, hey, you know, this is this is where we live. We're trying to build something here, and and it, and if it's a positive conversation, right? I mean, if it's not going to be positive, you know what to do after that. I mean, you just call the police on them every time, right? I mean, and that, unfortunately, it's your safety in the, in the community. If you live, I, I realize Belpar and Strasser and Fairlane are, are bad streets, but I can tell you this. You be glad you don't live on Packard Street. Oh, God. And, I, and I, I mean that in a very, I was, I was on Packard tonight and was in a drive, right? And it probably 12 minutes to get out. And I was really like coming out and squealing, to, you know, to do all this because I didn't know what was coming. I think I got that call. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I, I would like to say to the Mill Park folks, they have stuck together. Um, they, they deserve what everybody else deserves um, as, a, as, a, as a community. They're part of Fairlane Park. And, and anything I can do, personally, I'm happy to help. Um, it's a matter, I think it's a matter of uh, you guys caring enough and, and taking it serious. So I, I think that if, if it's that important to you, it should be that important to us as a community. All right. Well, last thing I want to cover is just make sure you have our contact information. It's on the screen there uh, now and, and feel free to reach out. Gil Thomas is the actual Metro employee that, that does this program. He'll become much more, he, Consultants can do a lot of this part and putting the plan together and all, but once he gets into the ballot questions and construction questions, he's a he's a great one to to contact. And and I guess Jeff, as you as the applicant, um, feel free to reach out to him and and certainly council members. And uh, he's great about getting that information back to you and getting you what you need. That's all I've got. We'll go ahead and cut the the people on the phone uh, loose. Thank you all for joining us tonight, and um, I appreciate your interest in this project and uh, we'll go ahead and and stop the the online meeting now thank you and thank you amy good night